Okay. Welcome to the Michigan Outdoors Special, our first wild game cooking contest. Morton F., how many cooking contests did you hold? 797. It seemed like it, didn't it? It sure did. <laughs> Held one every year. We have Mort as our distinguished leader here on the panel of judges and Dennis Lynn. Yes, sir. Why don't you slide this okay. dish right out in front of them and they will pass it down and take some food. Now what this is, the Dennis Lynn is going to be our first contestant in our category of cold dishes, dips, and appetizers. And uh, what we're basing this on, they've all the recipes, we have five categories now, we're checked for originality, versatility, and ease of preparation. Explain a little bit more about that. Mort is taking the first bit. Emil Dean, Captain Emil Dean is uh, one of our judges here, the legendary charter captain who, who's a charter captain year round. Randy Bell is the chef at Houghton Lake Holiday Inn and he's done many wild game dinners that he's put on and of course Bob Garner. Need I say anything about this professional eater? I, in fact, I even wore shoes that are a little too big so I could fill right up. <laughs> so I could fill right up. Kathy, why don't you start off with, with Dennis Lynn over here and the ingredients and give us an idea of how this venison Mexican quiche was put together. Okay. It's different, Dennis. You say venison Mexican. <laughs> How'd you come up with this? Well, I originally saw um, part of the, uh, the recipe on TV, and I didn't catch everything that was on it. So from there, I had to go and, and pick up on my own, and I added the meat to it and did a few things. So I just caught a basic recipe and then uh, so experimented and, and came up with my own. That's right. Good. Right. Okay, what we need just to tell, what goes into it? Okay. Uh, start off with your flour tortillas um, in the pan. Put a layer of cheese. Um, a layer of refried beans. Then I add a little red pepper and uh, some sauce. I like to spice it up a little bit. And then we put about a uh, pound and a half of venison burger, a, another thin layer of uh, refried beans, some salt, pepper, dice up some onions, um, another layer of cheese, shredded. So you just layer it. Just all layer the way it, right. And then uh, at the top, I slice and put tomatoes on it and a cup of milk with three eggs. You beat stir that up, topping. pour it all over it, let it settle on in it, and it has to bake for about an hour and a half, two Sounds hours. Sounds great. Hour and a half? Yep. Okay, Dennis, come on over here. It's time for, for Dennis Lynn from Muskegon. He came all the way here from Muskegon, and look at this panel of people <laughs> testing it. Let's start off with Bob Garner. Oh, look at this. Well, Bob, what do you give it? I, I, I give this give this recipe a, a nine. I can't think of anything that would, would make it better. It's an excellent recipe, but uh, it's good and spicy flavorful and taste taste Mexican with venison. That's great. <laughs> Randy great Bell, chef yeah. from the Houghton Lake Holiday Inn. I gave it a seven. I think it's uh, along the lines of a solid Mexican dish and it has a good versatility with the venison. I uh, think you could probably substitute any other kind of meat in there you'd like to. So yeah. I, and I think you yeah, did a good job on it. Also. So. Good. Captain Emil Dean. Well, I gave it a seven. It tastes like good home cooking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I gave, it a I gave it a five. I'm a little bit allergic to highly seasoned food. Uh oh, uh -oh. And, uh, it, this is highly seasoned, that's yes, for it sure. Is. So yes, I, it is. I just gave it a five, and uh, I, I think it's going to run much higher than that in the average. So, okay? That's scored out to what, Bob Garner? It scores out to, uh, to 28. It'll be 28 total 28, points. Dennis okay. Lynn. Now, you see, this is going to be compared <laughs> to the next one. Right. So that could, it looks like an excellent score to me. Okay. Why don't you Thank have you. a seat back here, and All let's right. bring on the next dish. In our cold dishes, dips, and appetizer category, these are sweet and sour venison meatballs. Look at these. Mary Fortin came down from Sutton's Bay. Wow. No, just put them on the side of, of this dish, and go ahead and scoop them out. If you guys want to just go for the spoon there. These are sweet and sour venison meatballs. And what do you do with that, Mary? The you can put the sauce and the meatballs over the rice. The, oh, the rice and the sauce and the meatballs. Okay. Kathy, let's find out. Mary was mighty she excited. She was so excited when I called here. her and she says, everybody in Sutton's Bay loves this recipe and I can't wait to hear what goes <laughs> okay. in it. Okay. Um, we have our venison, a pound and a half of venison and a half a pound of pork sausage and two eggs beaten, a um, tablespoon and a half of mustard, salt and pepper, a half a can of Eagle Brand goes in with the meat, two cups of breadcrumbs. Finally crushed breadcrumbs. Finally crumbs. crushed. And grated onion, a half a cup of grated onion. Then after you've made your meatballs into little bitty tiny ones, uh, about an inch, then you get a frying pan, electric frying pan, and put about oh, three or four tablespoons of oil, and just brown them. And when that's brown, set it aside. You add two bottles of, so of uh, chili sauce, about four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, 
and you add three quarter cups of water and a half of a five ounce jar of horseradish. Oh, wow. Mm. And simmer it <laughs> till not boil, but just simmer it so it's nice and hot. Oh, it sounds great. It's really sounds good. Real it good. sounds real good. It sounds like this is another spicy recipe, Mary. isn't it, Mary? Well, yeah. <laughs> We're going to find out how, how Mort Neff enjoys this in just a minute. Bob Garner. They're oh. winner, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Bob? I'd give, give that a nine, too. That's darn near uh, perfection. You know, the, the, it really tastes meaty. It doesn't have, doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, extra breadcrumbs or that sort of thing in it. Excellent, excellent dish. Randy Bell? I'd have to give it a nine also. I think it's uh, very, very flavorful. I think the, the actual taste of the venison is, is not really prevalent. I think you've got a good combination and a good blend. Thank you. Dean. I'd have to give it a nine also. <clears throat> I really like this, the flavor. Of, the spices are real good in it. Thank you. Well, this looks like collusion, but it's all nines. <laughs> You're going yeah. right up there. Nine's a score of 36. Uh, Mary really, Fort. Really delicious. You can congratulate Dennis Lynn, the, the runner-up. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> but I tell you, they both look great. There are the scores uh, for Dennis Lynn, 28, Mary Fortin, 36 on the sweet and sour venison meatballs. Both of those recipes, by the way, will be in our recipe book, which we're coming out with. It is going to be a premium for this pledge special. So call the number at the bottom of your screen, and uh, you will get Mary Fortin's recipe as well as the one that <laughs> I know it wasn't too shabby, Dennis, <laughs> coming you. up from Thank behind. You. Now we need to get our next batch of recipes up here, which are our chowders, soups, or stews. So if we could get them to roll in here right away. You guys are cleaning up your plates. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. No, we'll use you, these for the chowder. They're put up right down here. Okay, we have five categories, by the way. Uh, first was chowder, soups, or stews. I mean, first was the appetizers. Now we have chowder, soups, or stews. We have fish recipes, which will be coming up. Small game dishes. We have a rabbit and a goose breast surprise. And venison dishes. We have two great venison chop dishes uh, from Drayton Plains and from Gregory. And these recipes were chosen, by the way, for in three categories uh, for the uh, Prejudging, how we narrow down all of the entries to the ones we have here. Originality, what we were looking for was a few uncommonly available ingredients combined in an unlikely manner to create an uncommonly delicious dish. And they did it, obviously, right? These did it. Both those recipes were great. Common ingredients, but taste uncommonly delicious, huh? Versatility, also, you can, you can make a lot of substitutions. Folks, don't think that that the recipes have to be strictly uh, the wild game that we put in there because you can use beef, right Randy? Absolutely, anything that you want to put in there, Fred. I saw a lot of the recipes and some of them had a natural uh, beef flavoring or beef additive to it and they just took that completely away and put in wild game of any sort and the recipe stands. Great, that's, the, that's what you can use in your recipes. You can make substitutions here. We have our next recipe coming up. We want to get into our chowders, soups, or stews. And what do we have first, Kathy? We're going to do our venison burger soup with Marion Chefs from Oscoda. And you have it in here, Marion? Yes, I do. Ooh, venison soup. She needs a spoon for that. We need a little ladle here. Why don't we slide this, slide this down the roll. Uh, you can scoop up. I'll tell you what, Kathy, why don't you... I'll, I'll get this scooped up. We need a scooper. There's one right here in the rice. One on the rice. Okay, we'll use that. And if you want to try this venison burger soup, from Marion Chefs of Oscoda. You can put that in the bowls and pass them down. Mart will do that. Marion, yeah. venison burger soup. Right. How do you make it? <laughs> well, first of all, you gotta brown your ground venison. Mm -hmm. And then you can add all your ingredients, except for your cabbage. Except your, the cabbage. Right, your celery, your onions, onions carrots, carrots, barley. Barley? Right, huh. dried basil, ketchup, seasoned salt, and your beef bouillon, and I like white pepper in mine. White pepper? Mm -hmm. And the chowder. Right. Why? That little black specks floating in it. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't have a lot of black specks. How do you know if there's pepper? <laughs> and then about 15 minutes before you serve it, you add the cabbage. Add the cabbage. Mm -hmm. Come on over here, Mary. Let's find out what these distinguished judges feel about venison burger soup that does have a lot of common ingredients. Bob Garner Great to come in out of reluctantly put his spoon yeah, down. I, I did. I give, I give this recipe an eight. Yes. It, uh, it's a good deal spicier than, than a vegetable type uh, soup. I like it better than a regular vegetable type soup. And it's really good. I'd say it'd be great after a day rabbit hunt. 
Yeah. You just super. Randy? Did a tight shot. I gave it a seven. I think we've got a, a good continuity and texture here. I like the cut on the vegetables really well. It's prepared good, and I think the flavor is excellent. And Emil Dean? I gave it a nine. Whoa! Whoa, yeah, you know your I, soup. I'm a soup man. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. It was spiced up real nice and just the way I like a soup. Thank you. Oh, a very fine, full-bodied recipe. Something I like to come home to. I gave it an eight. An eight? Thank you. What's the total, Bob Garner? Thirty-two. Thirty-two points for Marion Chefs from Oscoda. Marion, congratulations. Thank you. I think they really liked it. Why don't you why don't you have a seat here? We'll bring out the next. David Guffey. David Guffey? I see. And this is more of a uh, something they're gonna put on their plates, David, a yeah. venison chef fleur. Chef fleur, yes. Okay, what you're gonna have to do is just scrape a little aside on your plate and I guess pass down the rice. You have some rice down there. And this chef fleur, I'm gonna be interested. Let's take a, a, a look at this through the camera right here. You can see it's a very attractive dish and the frying pan is <clears throat> very hot. Put this chef fleur on there. There's some, uh, looks like uh, cauliflower, onions. Go ahead, pass that down there. And Kathy, let's talk to David Guffey from Swartz Creek. He's got some really different looking ingredients than I've seen in a soup. Well, I'm, I'm waiting to hear about this. Actually, it's a chef fleur. Um, <clears throat> you got your venison, you cube it, mm -hmm. and you melt your butter into the pan, brown your venison, add the garlic garlic, clove of garlic with that. Mm -hmm. uh, after you brown your venison, then you would um, add your beef broth. Oh, beef broth. Oh, beef okay. broth and soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Let that simmer for about an hour along with some, some sugar. Oh, that's different. Just a half a teaspoon of sugar. Sweeten it up. Yeah. And then you would, um, after that, you would add your, uh, your, your green peppers and your cauliflower mm -hmm. until they're tender. And then you would add the cornstarch to make like a gravy mix. Just kind of automatically Just thickens thicken it. it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Put the Sounds good. On top. Then put the onions on top immediately afterwards. Let's find out here. We have to do a fairly quick wrap here, I think, on the venison chafleur. David Guffey prepared. Oh, Garner is right at the top end of the wall. I give it a nine. I love dishes like this. This, this is just great. Randy Bell. I gave it a nine. Color, color is beautiful. The texture is excellent. The flavor is tremendous. Are we going to see this come up in the Holiday Inn on the buffet? I don't know if we can <laughs> legally serve venison or not, but we can sure eat it. Okay, Emil Dean. I give it an eight. I, it was really good, but I, I guess I'm a soup man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's an eight too. I'll give it an eight any time. Very good. All right, let's see. That score, that's fairly tight. Well, that's a 34. a 34. A 34? A 34, that rates a 34. Marion, stand up here. That was close. Yeah. You have a soup man who's a real fan there. The score was 32 to 34, David. And you took it in that category. You're going to win the trip that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But what a couple of recipes. Oh, Real winners. That's our chowders, soups, or stews. We're going to be coming back with our fish dishes and our small game dishes. But uh, first we have a break here, a pledge break. Boy, I need a time cue bad. Two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, we have two minutes. Lots of time. Let's talk about recipes in the old days. Let's talk about them. In the old lumber camps, do you suppose they ever had anything like this? I don't know. Would anyone on the panel know? Emil? I wasn't old enough to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I read about days like You read about it? Yeah. Well, what about it, Mort? Well, I think probably they had them. I don't, don't think they had the distinctive flavors that we've had here tonight. If they did, I'd like to be a lumberjack. You would? Oh, yeah. What, That'd be great. What are you spending your time doing now? You're, I happen to know, close to 80. Give or take three or four years. Which size? <laughs> no, you, I, you just I had doing? a birthday in December. What am I spending my yeah. time at? I get that question. Worrying one. about what's coming next on this recipe. You know? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> right now you've been. But you, you still, do you still ski? Yeah, I like cross country ski. Yes, that's right. Cross country skiing, and you're liable to find more now fishing now and then up in the oh, yes, country. Oh yeah, I like that. Going to do a little uh, trout fishing this summer too. A lot of it, in fact. Okay, well we have uh, six more recipes coming up, and more contestants like Marion and David who are going to be bringing them on. What do you think, Kathy? Oh, I think it's great so far. Getting ready? Everything smells really good. Oh, look at this. <laughs> what are we doing here? This is for our cream oh, cheese fish rolls, I bet. Oh, coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned and please call your PBS station right now. 